In this screencast, we will discuss free interperitoneal air and how to manage that finding when detected on radiographs. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to recognize the findings of free interperitoneal air and explain how to confirm its presence and determine its clinical significance. We most commonly encounter free intraperitoneal air on upright radiographs. That's because the upright positioning of the patient allows the free air in the abdomen to settle under the diaphragms. That creates a clear contrast distinction between the diaphragm and the gas and is most confidently detected in the right upper quadrant where the liver usually resides. And when you see gas between the hemidiaphragm and the liver, you can be confident that that's air in the abdomen. Most often we see post-operative free air, and it can be incidentally detected on radiographs. Here you can see free air highlighted by the three yellow arrows under both the right and left hemidiaphragms. There are many other etiologies for free intraperitoneal air that are less common than post-operative intraperitoneal gas. Bowel perforation is one of the more common reasons to have intraperitoneal air. When you see a large volume of free intraperitoneal gas, you should suspect perforation of the stomach or duodenum, or less commonly, the cecum. Small volume free gas can be seen with the jejunum, ileum, or colon, as these often have less gas in them than the stomach duodenum or cecum. If the patient's had a recent bowel operation or a bowel operation in their past, an anastomotic dehiscence or breakdown can result in variable amounts of free intraperitoneal air. There are also a number of different procedures that can cause both pathologic and benign free air. Multiple endoscopic procedures put the patient at risk for bowel perforation and can result in free air. And benign free air can be seen in patients who are undergoing peritoneal dialysis who have recently had a percutaneous gastrostomy or jejunostomy catheter placed. So what do you do when you see free air on a radiograph or you order a radiograph on your patient and you get the finding back from the radiologist? First, you should correlate with any recent surgery or recent procedures. If the patient has had an intraperitoneal operation, realize that most patients have their gas resolved after an operation within 48 hours. And almost all patients have resolution of gas within five days. Another tip would be the gas should not increase on serial exams. So if you see increasing free air on upright radiographs of the chest or the abdomen, that could be an indication of ongoing bowel perforation. You should also consider doing a physical exam and assessing the patient for acute abdominal pain. If the patient does have acute abdominal pain, even if they've had a recent operation, this could be indication that the free intraperitoneal gas is pathologic. Here we can see a patient with free intraperitoneal gas under the diaphragms. You can see gas here and a large volume of gas here under the left hemidiaphragm with a separate gastric bubble. This is a patient who is post-op day one from a sigmoid resection. They did not have any abdominal pain and this large amount of gas took approximately five days to resolve and was followed with serial radiographs. When free intraperitoneal air has been detected or suggested on a chest radiograph, consider an upright abdominal radiograph to confirm the chest radiographic findings. You can also use an upright abdominal radiograph to assess for change in volume. And at times an upright radiograph can better differentiate gas within the colon or stomach or clonic interposition from free intraperitoneal air. If the patient does have acute symptomatology or clinical decline, consider a CT abdomen and pelvis with oral and IV contrast, for this will increase the sensitivity of the exam for bowel perforation and other etiologies for free intraperitoneal air. In this radiograph, we have a patient who has recently undergone esophageal dilation. We can see free air between the liver and the diaphragm on the right and free air between the spleen and the diaphragm on the left. 
Notice the gas here within either the stomach or the colon. That is not free air. An upright radiograph was obtained in this person. We can actually see air sitting under the crooks of the diaphragm. We can see air under the right hemidiaphragm and left hemidiaphragm. We can also see some gas outlining the spleen here. Due to the large volume of gas and the recent esophageal dilation, this patient was sent to the CT scanner and received a CT with IV and oral contrast. The CT here is placed into lung windows to improve our sensitivity for gas. And we can see gas here between the abdominal wall and the liver that's even outlining the falciform ligament, a highly specific sign for free intraperitoneal air. And we can see that the gastroesophageal junction is perforated and there's gas extending into the left upper quadrant with little flecks of gas under the mesentery. So this was a case of esophageal perforation related to esophageal dilation. Remember there are some pitfalls. The colon can sometimes become interposed between the liver and the diaphragm and can mimic free air in the right upper quadrant. And in the left upper quadrant, the gastric bubble and the splenic flexure can often mimic free air. In this case, you see a very distended gastric bubble that almost looks like free air. Notice there does remain some separation between the diaphragm and that gastric bubble. And that is a normal finding. In summary, we most commonly detect free intraperitoneal air on upright chest radiographs under the hemidiaphragms, with the right hemidiaphragm being more specific than the left. Upright imaging is key for improving your sensitivity for free intraperitoneal air as it causes the gas to rise and settle under the hemidiaphragms. When you detect intraperitoneal air, correlate it with any recent procedure or surgery if they had a laparotomy or a laparoscopic surgery, most people have that gas resolved within 48 hours and nearly all patients have resolution within five days. Increasing gas or persistent gas beyond five days should raise concern for some sort of bowel perforation. If the patient has acute abdominal pain and free air or any other signs of clinical decline, consider getting a CT of the abdomen and pelvis with oral and IV contrast.